Good evening, and thank you for joining us here today at Hillsford Baptist Church Online uh, for our Wednesday night Bible study, and uh, we're just uh, th thankful that you have joined us today. Um, before we get started, uh, we're going to um, have a few announcements, uh, things that are happening here in the life of our church. Um, first off, um, uh, typically we do uh, Christmas cards for uh, the, the season of Christmas, and, and we have a card exchange and a long table. Um, we're not going to be able to do that in the same way this year. Uh, so if you do have uh, Christmas cards you would like to give out, we just uh, want to encourage you to send them out by mail. Um, I know that is a huge ministry, and, and it's a blessing to many people. And so I just uh, want to encourage you to just do it that way. We're not going to be able to have... Uh, the table and uh, this year, uh, the card table and the exchange this year is there's just no way to uh, prevent uh, any kind of cross contamination there um, in regards to you know COVID virus or, or whatever. So we're just we're just not going to be able to do that uh, this year. But I just want to encourage you, please do uh, write your Christmas cards, send them out by mail, um, and and that would be I know a blessing to many. Also, Golden Agers, uh, you, there was. A scheduled uh, uh, meeting this December uh, for a Christmas party that is going to be moved to January, the January meeting, and so uh, just uh, stay, in, uh, you know, in tune with uh, the calendar and and with um, uh, Joy Hurt and and uh, connected with her, and and I know she will, she can keep you updated on that. But the, uh, the plan is to to just move uh, the December meeting to January. Um, and so that's that's coming up as well. Uh, choir, um, I know there's probably been some people thinking about what are we doing for choir. Um, we're going to start back up first of the year, um, and and just kind of where that's just what we got to do. Um, and so I know we have been working hard on a Christmas program and Christmas songs, and and that just is killing me. Uh, but we're going to have to move it um, to uh, the first of the year, and and hopefully we'll be able to start then. Um, and in regards to Sunday services, uh, we are we are open uh, on at 8:30 service and 11 o'clock service. We have child um, we have a children's church available for uh, children uh, during the 11 o'clock service. And so, I uh, just want to encourage you to come out and join us. Uh, we'd love you. Both of those services are both uh, face mask required services. And so, um, we just want to encourage you to come out. We're doing everything possible to make sure everything's clean and sanitized at both services. Um, and, and to just be cautious and, and to have a safe environment for, for all to come out. And so uh, we just want to worship God, and, and we want to worship God together and, and, and uh, just give him the glory, and uh, especially during this Christmas time as we celebrate uh, our coming Savior. And so uh, that is, that's kind of where we're at today, and I, um, I'm sure you may have many other questions. Please call the office if you have any other questions about any other ministries. Um, uh, we do have... A caroling event coming up um, on the 13th of December. It's after church at 2 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be going out a Christmas caroling at some of the shut-ins as well as our Runk and Pratt. Um, and then we're going to come back for a time of a hot chocolate and some cookies and some coffee and stuff like that. So um, uh, so that that is coming up on December 13th. If you would like to, to be a part of that, uh, we would love to have you. And that's going to uh, be, again, Sunday at 2 o'clock on the 13th. Um, but uh, anyway, we're going to get started today, but I want to open in a time of prayer uh, before we get started. I know there's many people that have been hurting and things have just been going on um, in their life, and, uh, and uh, we just need to be uh, diligent in prayer for each other. And, uh, and, and so let's do that today. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer and, and, uh, and just lift our time up here. Uh, this evening. Dearly Father, we love you. We praise you. Again, we thank you for uh, the opportunity to come and meet with uh, like-minded believers uh, through our online ministry. And uh, God, we just uh, want to lift up them, Lord, and their families. And, and just um, I just pray that they're doing well, that you would just bless them in a mighty way. Uh, God, I uh, just uh, I pray that you keep them safe and, and uh, encourage them and lift them up. Lord, let them know you love them. I uh, pray for those who have been uh, just hurting over the past few weeks and, and just life situations have, have happened and um, it is, it's just been a tough few weeks and tough few months. Uh, Lord, we lift them up. Lord, let them know you love them. Let them know you're there with them, that you haven't left them uh, by any means, but you are, you are there walking with them. And so uh, we, we lift up those individuals. You know every situation uh, and every um, 
uh, every person that is 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 uh, with us today, and and what what is going on, and um, and everybody in our church, and all the different situations. You know what's happening. So we just lift those people up to you. Uh, we do give you glory for for just the opportunity to meet. We give you glory for um, for for our salvation. We give you praise for for sending your Son uh, to the Word becoming flesh, Lord, and and dwelling among us, and and giving us this gift of salvation making that possible for us, Lord. And uh, so we give you the glory today. We are so thankful for our, um, our salvation and our forgiveness and the grace that you give us, Lord. And so uh, we give you praise for that today. Uh, God, we love you and we praise you, Lord. And uh, just be with us as we get into your word today and teach us something that would, uh, that would get our hearts and minds going and, uh, and, and that, that would change, change us and make us different than, than when we started here today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so um, today, if you've got your Bibles, you can turn uh, to, uh, to John chapter 1, and we're going to be reading verses uh, 1 through 5. Um, but bef- before we get started, I want to just take a, a moment and say, you know, when, when, you, when you think about uh, Christmas and you think about Christmas celebrations, I, my mind goes to children. My mind goes to families, you know, and what that looks like. You know, we all have different traditions. We all have different uh, things and games that we play. Uh, We have all kinds of things like that. Um, But, you know, for my family, we do, uh, uh, my immediate family, we do Christmas Eve. You know, we've always done that. Summer and I have always exchanged gifts on Christmas Eve because uh, that left Christmas available for uh, everyone else. And, and so that's what we did, um, and we still do that now. We we kind of carry that carried that over with our children. Um, but tip the typical scene though is is children running down the staircase. They they run over to the tree. They find their name on the gift, and they're shaking it and everything. They're waiting for the parents to come in, and they just want to rip into this gift and see what this gift is. Um, you know, but what is the reason for all of the celebration? And have you, uh, that, that is the question that we're going to be asking. What is the reason? We have all these elaborate gifts. We have great food. We spend a lot of time with our friends and our family. To, and, and what is the celebration all about? And, and, and so it, the world would probably would, would chalk it all up to happy holidays. It's all about just the holiday, you know, the Christmas holiday. Uh, and, and, and that's what they would say. But the truth is it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's always been about Jesus. It still is about Jesus. And you can't take Jesus away from Christmas because Christmas is all about Jesus and the Word becoming flesh, Him dwelling among us, is sending His Son to this earth in the form of a child. And it's all about Jesus. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. In the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, it says this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, was with God, was God. Excuse me, let me read that over here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. And without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light to all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You know, this passage is referring to the Word and, or Jesus in the, was in the beginning with God when all things were created. He was an active part of creation. So it says there in the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That is a huge doctrinal statement right there. The, what is the true miracle Christmas? Is this, is that God became man... And then he came to die for all of men. And so uh, what, what, what an awesome miracle this is that the creator of the war, world came to be a human uh, and came to be in the likeness of mankind to this earth. Uh, our, you know, and so our God left his heavenly throne above to come and dwell among us to ultimately die for us, for our sins. Uh, this is, you know, so he was still fully God, and he was fully man, and he was in the flesh. 
And so that is where we're starting. And that's just a huge thing that he was he was in creation. And yet he came humbly as a helpless little child. Um, millions of, uh, of people celebrate Christmas year after year, um, but how many of them actually stop to think about what the real miracle is? What is, what is the real miracle of Christmas? What is this all about? And, and yeah, we know, oh, it's Jesus, and, and there was a virgin birth, and, um, you know, and, we, and we, we talk about all those things, but really, what it all boiled down to? What would, I mean, and so without Jesus, without Christmas, there would be no salvation. And so for the believer, Christmas is a huge, huge celebration and a, and a, and a very big deal. We all have probably um, seen the Charlie Brown uh, uh, Christmas, you know, story, Christmas cartoon. And, and we watch it, you know, we, we usually watch it at least once a year. And so we'll get it on there. But there's one part in that little film that's where Charlie Brown steps up and he's really frustrated and, he, and he, he's frustrated because, he, because he's tired of, of all the commercialism. He's tired of people getting distracted. And he says, can anybody tell me what Christmas is all about? But luckily, Charlie Brown has, has a friend and his name is Linus. And Linus, he knew the Christmas story. And so Linus opens up and pretty much repeats verbatim the, or, or, or recites the story of Luke. Of, 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 of the angels coming to, a, 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 to these shepherds in a field and telling that the, there's a king being born in Bethlehem. The Messiah is being born. And so, then, and, then, and so he shares that story with Charlie Brown. And I just think, I, I think uh, that is just a, a great, a great uh, cartoon and, and moment in that, in that, in that, um, in that video. Um, but however, Linus only gives a glimpse of, of, what this, of, the, of, the, of the whole miracle. He just gives a part of what that miracle is, is all about. And so let's take a deeper look at John chapter 1, 1 through 5, and really emphasize the miracle of Jesus today. And so it says, what, what or who is the Word? So when we talk about the Word, what is the Word? And that Word in this scripture is referring to Jesus. Um, and so from what it says here um, in verse 14, it, it's obviously Jesus, but verse 1 and 2 emphasizes that the Word was with God in the beginning. And so what does that suggest is that this baby that is being born, the Word becoming flesh, the, it is not just a normal baby. You know, it's not just like a, a, a two people get together, uh, uh, you know, and and. They love each other, and, and, and there's a husband, there's a wife, and they, and they get together and they have a child, and there's a new baby. Well, that's not exactly how it happened with Jesus, because Jesus was there in the beginning, and now he is in the flesh, in the form of a baby. So he's not a new baby. He was fully God. He was fully man. He was there in creation, and now he is flesh, here to save us. And so it's kind of crazy if you really stop to think about just really how that was the creator of the world the great sovereign god came as a infant child that is helpless totally dependent on his parents but yet he was fully god totally in control of the universe and everything that has been created um that's just incredible, incredible to think about that. And what does this verse say about the connection between the word and God? It says he was God, he was with God and he was God from the beginning. So he was in creation, he was with God and he was God. Uh, we have, a, you know, right here in these verses, we see um, it is teaching, you know, the doctrine of the Trinity. You know, uh, we see that throughout scriptures. Uh, we can see verse after verse about the Trinity, about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're three, but they are one. Um, and, and, you know, we've tried for years as pastors to, to kind of find examples of how you can explain how you can have three people and one. Um, and I don't know that there is a good way to um, really explain the Trinity uh, that we can, in a way that we can understand. We, you know, but it is true. There is three, the, tr the doctrine of the Trinity, there is three. There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But yet they are all one. They are the same. And so it says that he was with God and he was God. The Word is the second person of the Trinity. 
Jesus, the second person of Trinity, the Son of uh, the Son of the Father, who is one with the Father as God, and who is with the Father. And so, according to verse three, what did the Word make? They made all things. Everything that has been made, they made, and nothing that has been made. Um, you know, there, there was nothing that has been made that he did not make. So he has touched everything. He was a part of all that is created. So that is just a phenomenal thought. So it would take a minute to just really soak in that thought. The fact that the person described here is the same person who began his human life as a baby in a barn or a cave or, or, or just or a stable. When you really think about it, uh, think about whom this this baby was. What is your reaction to Christmas? What is you know, and it kind of changes your perspective there a little bit. In verses four and five, um, it says this: "It says the darkness has not understood it." And what does that mean? Is that it, it, what does what does that mean that the darkness does not understand? And because it also talks about in that same passage that the word. Be, be, uh, the word bringing light and life into the world. And so, but the darkness did not understand that. So what does that mean? Um, you know, if, you know, many people, it, it could mean that, you know, when you are in sin, that, you know, just like many people are, we, we are in sin a lot of times. And when we are in sin, we don't really want to hear the word of God. We don't want to hear the truth of the word of God. And we may not even understand it. If you think about um, before you were Christ, before you were Christians, um, you, you may think of the Word of God and say, man, I don't want anything to do with that. You know, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be a part of that. Why? Because you didn't understand it. You didn't have the Holy Spirit. You weren't a part of what God was doing. And so that, that could be very true, that we were blind, blinded by our sins in regards to the spiritual truths of the Word of God that give light and they give life into our life. Um, but if you translate this, this word understood, uh, in the in Greek, it literally means to take down, or and, and that could be a material thing uh, that you grab or to get, uh, but it also could refer to a physical struggle, in in a sense that you know a wrestler would would struggle with their opponent, or a uh, officer would go and take down um, a suspect. So. In regards to that, which I think is a, a better interpretation of it, so uh, we could be talking about this conflict between light and darkness, and darkness cannot be, uh, uh, and, and so so darkness is trying to take down the light, but it it doesn't have the power to. Um, the power of evil cannot put out the candle or the light that Christ brings to this earth and the life that Christ brings and 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 it and it's so true uh that and, and i can't emphasize that enough that when we receive christ in our life that he does bring life and he brings light to our life uh and, and it changes our life forever and therefore that darkness uh has no place in a believer's life and let's continue on in reading in john chapter 1 verses 6 through 14 it says, therefore, uh, there, excuse me, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all, all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light uh, to everyone was coming into the world. He was the, he, he was in the world and through the world, and though the world was was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to the he came uh, to that which was his own, but has but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in him in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born of natural descent, um, not not born of natural descent, nor of human uh, uh, decision or by or by husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. 
we have seen his glory and the glory of his of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and full of truth you know john uh here uh this is not the apostle john this is uh this is um not to be confused with the apostle john but this is talking about john the baptist um although this is in the book of john um all, all four gospels start with um all, all four Gospels start with uh, his, the experience of his baptism. And so John's purpose was to testify to, um, to, of the, and witness and be a, a forerunner for Jesus. And so it's important to, to say here that, that John himself was not the light. Why is, that, why is that important to emphasize that John was not the light? Uh, there are probably a lot of people out there who, who understand this and can, can relate to this, uh, but people will follow the person, the messenger. And, and that actually happened with John where people were following him and, and not the Messiah, they were, they, and not Jesus, but they were, they, they, they were getting confused with John the Baptist and, and, and Jesus. And so he was making the point to say that he was not the light. He was not. And if we go back and just read that again... Um, he came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, but came only to witness to the light, only to give instruction and point to the light. I just think that is a, um, a cool thought. You know, even as um, believers, we should want our life to point to Christ uh, and to leave a trail back to Christ. I like that analogy. You know, just like John was a forerunner for Christ, John the Baptist was a forerunner for Christ in preaching that he, the coming Messiah and baptizing people. Um, we, as believers, want people to look at our lives and say, yeah, we want people to, be point, to, to point back to Christ because we're just a reflection of what he's done in our life. You know, our life is just a reflection of, of, of that Holy Spirit working through us. Um, and so, so I, just, I just really like that. So it's important to know that, that John is not the light, it was Jesus. Sometimes people have that tendency to worship the messenger. They'll fall behind the pastor or that leader or that president or whoever, whoever it is, and, and, and we miss the one true light. You know, um, we're talking about Christmas, so we can, we can say St. Nicholas, right? He was a really, uh, he was a, a real person. Who, who, uh, uh, who was a, a godly person, who, who was a saint, and would go out and, and care for people. You know, I guarantee if he could talk to you today, he would say, he would tell you, he would point back to Jesus. You know, although he was doing all these great things, and he was serving the community and stuff, it was all about Jesus. It wasn't about him, and so many times, for Christmas, who gets put into the light? When really, that position belongs to Jesus. He is the light. Um, and so we worship a lot of times that tradition instead of the actual light, which is Jesus. Worship the, the one true light in life um, of the world. Uh, so in, um, in these verses, it kind of leaves us with a different message. And so let's, let's talk about that. The light, the word of God, uh, is coming into the world, to the world in verse 9, but the world uh, of darkness does not receive the light in verse 5, even though he made the world uh, in the first place in verse 3. You, you might think that the world would be eager to meet the creator of the world and be eager to meet him, but that was not the case. Only a few would receive him. Only a few would accept him. Um, think about what the scripture says happens when you receive Jesus. And that's this when I read that and you read through the scripture, it just kind of makes you smile a little bit. He says, they received the right to become the children of God. So when you receive Jesus, when you re, when you accept that gift of forgiveness based upon your faith by his grace, then you receive the right to become the children of God. Cuz we are saved through his grace, for by grace that we have been saved. And, and when we do that, we receive the right to become the children of God. So in a way, Christmas can be a birthday for all of us. And so we give gifts, a celebration of Jesus, the ultimate gift. 
You know, it's almost like a birth thing, right? So we go to the tree, we open all these gifts, but each gift should remind us of the one true gift of Jesus who gave his only son in the form of a baby to ultimately come and die for us, who gives us the opportunity to be born again. And so as believers, we are born again and we, and, and we celebrate Christmas through giving and receiving of gifts. Um, in verse 14, it talks, it changes a little bit. It says, the word became flesh. You know, up to this point, John kind of gave these ideas of what the word was. And he says it, it was that he was the word. He was the life. He was the light. And we see those images and those those uh, descriptions of what God is. And it kind of kind of leaves you this uh, idea that he's just somewhere out there. He's somewhere out there. You know, God is, we don't see him, but he's out there. But then in verse 14, he kind of drops Jesus right into, he drops us right into the Christmas story with this idea that the word is becoming flesh. He became a human being. He is living with us. And he gives this phrase that, that he made his dwelling place among us. He, he pitched his tent here. He, he, came, he is God with us here today. And so what a great um, reason to celebrate. It's the word coming, becoming flesh. It's Jesus. The, it is God in the flesh. And it's important to know that Jesus actually became a physical human. It was him in the flesh. And so let's talk about why it's important to know that. In, in verse uh, uh, 29, in John chapter 1, verse 29, it says, The next day, John, uh, Jesus came to, towards him and said, uh, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It was Jesus. He, had all, he was all grown up at this point. And I know we're kinda, it kind of feels like we're mixing holidays, Easter and Christmas here. But, but here's the thing. Is, is, you, know, you know, Good Friday comes sneaking into this story uh, of the miracle of Christmas. We have John. He's baptizing people, and he points to Jesus. Jesus is walking towards him, and he points out that this is Jesus, the one, the Lamb of God, who's going to take away the sins of the world. He calls him the Lamb of God, uh, and he uses, uh, the lambs are used as a sacrifice. They are used as, as a sacrifice for our sins, and Jesus, John calls Jesus the Lamb of God. Jesus would take away the sins of the world, but he had to do that by dying on a cross for us. And so what, what a miracle that is. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a beautiful picture that is for us and how much he loves us. Um, this, is how, this is how he would give us life uh, or light to everyone and also how he gives us life and by giving us the opportunity to receive forgiveness for our sins, to step away from the darkness, to, put, to give us light and to give us a new life so that we could be born again. So when we think about Christmas, you know, a lot of times people uh, will say, well, you know, it's about a virgin birth and Mar Mary and, and, and this immaculate conception. That was, and, and, and yes, that is a miracle in itself and a huge, huge, uh, you know, feat to do that. And, 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 and what a step of faith that Mary had to, 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 to surrender to that. And, 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 you know, we could do a whole sermon on that, that one doctrine and that one thing. And it's very important. But. Yes, that is a big deal. But the, ultimately, the true miracle is Jesus. He, he came to this earth, and, and the Word became flesh, and He came to die for us so that you and I could have the opportunity to have salvation. Um, and so that is the true miracle of Christmas. And so perhaps this Christmas, you know, that we should take some time to go back and read the Easter story. Go back, go back and read the story of Jesus and how he came and he died for you and for me. Um, and so when we think about this little baby born, we really see that ultimately he's our Savior. This was a lot bigger deal than just a baby born in Bethlehem. 
This was our coming Messiah. This was the person. This was, this was God in the flesh, God Himself, God with us, dwelling among us, who came and lived this perfect life. And it became a sin sacrifice for us. Um, and so that really, really changes the meaning of what Christmas is all about for us. It just it kind of makes it so much more special. Um, it is a very humbling story. Um, and it, it, it's a story that shares a gift uh, that was very, a very, a baby, you know, that ultimately died for us. And, and we didn't deserve that. We didn't do anything to earn that, but he did that for you and for me. And so that is the Christmas miracle. And so, guys, I hope you got something out of, uh, of our message today. Um, and, and I hope you could just, just kind of wakes up some thoughts in your mind and your heart and just as we read the Scripture today. And uh, God, I hope you just take some, some time to reflect on that and, about who Jesus really is and about what Christmas is really all about. Um, yes, it's about a baby. Yes, it's about a virgin birth. Um, but it's about Jesus who, who died for you. And I hope you know him today. It's as simple as just saying, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again. Come into my life and be my Savior. And he is faithful to come in and forgive you of all sin um, and forgive you of all unrighteousness and to give you life, to give you light, and, and, and to change your life. So we're going to end in prayer, and then we're going to dismiss. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this time. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for the story uh, of, of Christmas. We thank you for sending your son um, to be born and, and uh, stable for us, uh, Lord. And, and we thank you for the obedience of Mary. We thank you for, um, it's, just a, it's just an awesome story to think about. But ultimately, God, we thank you for, for giving us your son so that we could have life. Uh, Lord, because without that, we are nothing. And so, God, we give you the glory for that. And we thank you that, uh, that you rose again from the dead, Lord, and showed us this, this uh, great power of resurrection uh, from the dead. And so that, that, that is our hope, that, that one day that we will be resurrected with you uh, in the sky, Lord, and, and we, will, we will meet you face to face. Our faith will be made sight, um, all of, uh, you know, and it's just going to be a great day. Uh, Lord, so we just thank you for that, Lord. Uh, thank you for, uh, again, this time. Um, tonight, and um, I pray that uh, these, these words would just resound in the hearts of the people of those listening t this evening. Um, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next time.